Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is one of the new projects I'm doing. Now, To Be Loved Treasures by Corin uh, shared a little video about her workshop when she went to do the Fleur Woods workshop in Brisbane and she talked about Magnolia Pearl Clothing and I just love the stuff and, we, and Corin and I had a bit, little bit of a joke that um, we do this slow stitching stuff all the time. Maybe we could sell our clothing line for hundreds <laughs> of recycled stuff. Um, so with that in mind, I thought I am going to do a little do-it-yourself magnolia pearl clothing style um, to see if I can actually emulate it. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be emulating it, but I'll be doing my style of it. But it's inspired me to work a little bit more on clothing, which um, I really enjoyed doing the Roxy's wearables because I did my big apron and I just loved that. So I found this next to nothing beautiful um, soft wool or it's an Angora or something with a hole and uh, at Savers and it had a few stains. So I've actually stuck it in a little bit of bleach for a short time and it does seem that the stains that were down the front seem to have seem to have disappeared however i, I didn't mind the stains being there because it kind of like it, i don't know if you can see it there's a very faint little patch here but i didn't mind and I, when i put it on i just felt it was really cozy and i also thought it was a good painting jumper when you're cold and you want to do some painting in the studio so I've got one hole here that I'm going to be darning. So it's going to be very obvious when this is darned that this is going to be a visible mending project. I, I'm not quite sure how many videos I'm going to make, but I, it's, a, it's going to be an ongoing thing until it's done. So I, I've already had a little bit of a start because I wanted to just have a little play and just see how I went with it. So this is the base line. However, I'll be probably doing some embroidery over the top of this as well, or doing some more to the edges. Um, I can put links down below to Corinne's um, particular video because she does a little flip through of their merch book and it's got quite a lot of pictures and also their Instagram or her Instagram. I just think it's a young, youngish girl. So I've got another little part here on, on, on a sleeve where I've started to put some things down. Once again, as I said, with the Roxy's projects and meeting up with Rachel and Sarah and Juju up at Green Door Studios, when you get a pack of little fabrics either posted to you or you pick up at a workshop, this gives you a memory it's a memory so I, I just decided this bit I think I think it was from one of Sarah's packs um I can't remember I should have paid more attention when I opened my packs but I was too excited and I just opened them <laughs> um so the sleeve is a little bit more difficult than the side of the jumper because you've got to get your hand in there um but what a wonderful thing to be doing to be just recycling, basically. Now, which way am I going to go? And um, I was having a little laugh because I love doing this to jumpers. I've, I've got a few jumpers where I've got thread stitching a seam together and holes on the shoulders fixed. And one of the funny things is that Huss is very classic businessman. And I swear when he looks at it, he thinks, oh, my goodness, I've got to buy her a new jumper. She's patching her, patching her jumper together <laughs> and not realising that with my arty creative brain that that I actually love it. <laughs> and and new clothes can be so expensive anyway. So why not have your own clothing that's your own little unique, unique designs? So I've just been 
doing these basics with the other one on the side and now with this one of just doing a running stitch all the way around to get them down so I can sort of have a bit of a look at how how it's going to look in the overall picture um, obviously with the apron um, I'm, I'll put in a little photo here That was once a month, one piece. So you didn't have an end picture or plan it out or lay it out. So even though I'm just sort of doing a big running stitch, if I look at it overall, I can get a good picture of the whole overall process. Um, whereas with the apron, uh, yeah, it definitely had um, uh, where's the next spot I can fit something in kind of vibe. <laughs> I'm going to need my pliers. So this this is thick and harder to get the needle through. Uh, that's why all my needles are bent. <laughs> oh well. A bit of the uh, showing the workings by having your bent needles. All right, I'm going to take that out the way. Um, another thing I think when I'm doing this is which way am I sewing? I think I look at it. So if I've put a bit of bits, bits together here like this, I look at the direction I'm going to sew to try and make it easy. You know, like if I come down and around here, then maybe I should then be able to go up here. I came down around here because I think I'm going to add something here and I didn't want to end up um, sewing around here if I'm going to add something. Uh, but th now the way that it looks, I am sort of on the way to doing that. So perhaps I will come back in under and start down here on this edge. I can use this line as my last line. I haven't started to do any decorative embroidery stitches yet, like mark making or little crosses, anything, anything like that, because I'm, as I say, I want to just get an overall view of where I've put things and how they work. Some of these ones with fraying edges, I'm doing this this little st stitch that comes over the edge. So it just holds it in from fraying. And it just gives another little bit of interest. I definitely want to incorporate, so that, that thread, pull that out, um, incorporate a little bit of vibrant thread. And we'll see what threads match with the bits of material I've used. So this is almost looking a little bit like a blanket stitch around this one because it's holding those edges from fraying. It's got a very handmade look about it now, definitely. Okay, so I'm just coming up to the end here and I wanted to put on more memories, of course. Just a little doily, just this little, this little one. That's not a specific memory, that one. But I like how putting it on here kind of extends the edge but I have put these little hearts on from my friend Louise so I'm thinking I'm going to put one of these on too I 
So my thread is here. Just going to see if I can put my hand down in and if it's easier. Um, if I'm going to come up through this felted heart, thank you, Louise, it's probably going to create a running stitch along the edge of the heart. No, it's too hard with my hand in there. So this is a part of the experimentation of the whole thing and the creative fun process. So I can see that little line there. I actually quite like how it defines the edge of the heart. So I'm going to come and do that running stitch all around the edge of there. And it means I can get to tuck this little bit under as well. It's just started to come undone. Probably when I pulled apart um, the bits that Louise had given me because there was a few of these little hearts were sewn together to make little flowers. can't kind of weave my needle in and out because I want smaller stitches on this. I'm just going to come around and finish the heart. So I've just realised that something that's going to make it a lot easier is coming just above the stitch line and doing a running stitch along here, which will get it down. And then I'll have a hunt out for something that is as close as I can get to that blue wool for this edge, because that will still be loose. One more little loose bit there that I will couch down. My casting off is just basically getting one of the stitches from the knitting and going through it and doing a single slip and then a double. And that should be enough to hold that down. So this particular bit of material uh, I can't remember where I got it. I probably got it at Spotlight or something like that in one of those little, you know, fat quarters when it was on sale or some, something like that. But the memory for me of this is that I used it when I did the 52 tags with Anne Brooke. And so whenever I look at this, it reminds me of the day we did the applique and reverse applique and I used this shape for the applique. So I think I might highlight this in a way. So I'll get some wool for this or some thread and I will possibly see um, a contrasting color perhaps to um, put near it and to highlight that little flower. So I'll just get those. Now I've got one of my tubs with some of my blues. The darkest blue I've got is this, but that's much darker. I don't have that colour. What about a vibrant one? No, not sure. No. Uh, what about a contrast? I did say I wanted some vibrant colours. That's going to go with that nicely. That goes with that nicely. Oh, I don't have much of it left. All right, I've just got uh, another pot here that I thought I would double check some of these blues. Um, once again, my favourite little grandma's stash box. These ones I got, I think I got about five or four or five of these large ones, all numbered in DMC. From a lady in Tasmania, I think. Oh, they're a bit purple. Let's just have a look at some of these to match. That's pretty close, isn't it? That's a bit yellow. And I don't know about anyone else, but 
because they're all numbered, I feel like I've got to put them right back where I got them from. 825 next to 820. Oh, there's some missing. Oh, no, I shouldn't look at that. <laughs> you know what will happen. I'll start to want to fill in the gaps. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, this might be good because it's just only two strands. Oh, no. I spoke way too soon about that. So <laughs> the box wasn't shut properly. It's just fallen on the floor and every single one of these has fallen out onto the floor. And <laughs> so much for thinking about being organised in order. <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? All right. <laughs> I'm just going to do a little over, overcast stitch here. <laughs> That's, that's cracked me up. So this should be fairly invisible to the eye because it's as close as I could find to the same colour and it'll just get this edge down so as it's not, not up in the air. <laughs> oh, I'm going to giggle about that for a while. So I'm not having the same problem getting through the material as I was having before it's a bit easier to stitch this way because I'm coming in between the two wool bits of wool and then down into just cotton and jumper and of course the jumpers are fairly open weave so it's pretty uh, pretty good pretty easy a bit of couching again for those loose ends Okay, I'll cast this off and then I'm going to look at that little flower. Or should I look at the mess I just made on the floor? I don't know. I think I have to pick them up because it's disturbing me. I will be back. Now I'm just coming around this little cutout from a doily. And I love the little edges that are snipped and that are poking out, but I still want to kind of make sure that they don't get caught on things. So I just do a little bit of a couchy sort of stitch over the top to just get them down. So I just thought I'm going to pick up a little bit of colour and start doing what I love doing. It's coming and bringing some colour into the little off cuts of doilies to pretty them up a little bit. And uh, this will be the end of part one. <laughs> so I do enjoy this, this part of the process, adding little bits of colour, having a bit of a play. Now, how much have I got left over? I got a bit. I could do a bit more. Maybe I'll just do a couple of French knots. Uh, that was probably uh, not always the wisest idea. If you want to be on a little bit of a roll and you start doing French knots and you're near the end of your thread, that's not always a good idea. Let's just do maybe four or five if I can. I don't want them totally loosey-goosey, but just not pulling them too tight means that they'll sit up a bit better. Okay, I think I'll just make it four turns around the needle. And easily fitting four in here. But I'm just going to stretch it, see if I can get five in. Okay, okay, so we have 
a sleeve that can be embellished a bit more. We have a side that I did off camera, but has areas here for some interest. And I have now added color on this one, which kind of, I think is going to depict the way that the color goes from now. So for when I'm doing the darning up here, this one, I'll be thinking about this. I'll be thinking about this color, that little corally color, which kind of emulates this. Now I'm going to treat this blue as a base material color, but not necessarily look towards it for any of the embroidery. And I honestly don't have an overall picture of the piece because there has to be a part of the creative process where you allow in, in your muse to work and your inspiration to happen. Okay, so uh, I hope you enjoyed that and follow along, have fun, play with your own little things and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.